the systemic racism, the pandemic, all of these are very much tied together. There's a, there's a thread because, of course, blacks uh, have suffered disproportionately because of the pandemic. There must be full equality under the law, and we're clearly not there. So my top priority is going to be to focus on getting this bill done, the whole bill, to deal with accountability, to deal with transparency, to deal with police practices. It does things like ban police violence, like chokeholds. It creates a registry, as Maisie mentioned. It holds the police officers who have had a series of charges against them and uh, uh, things filed against them accountable. And the Justice in Policing Act also uses the power of the federal funding to incentivize police departments across the country to implement these desperately needed standards. That's my focus. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Are you worried at all that this will fund the police argument, though, could become well, toxic for Democrats? Look, I've given you my answer. If we pursue this bill, the public's on our side, and we will do very well. George Floyd's funeral today on all three cable networks. So I think it's only fair that we take a moment to show a memorial service that unfortunately escaped coverage. Mourners in St. Louis lined up for blocks and waited hours to pay their respects to local hero, former police captain David Dorn. He was 77 and he was ruthlessly gunned down while defending his friend's business a week ago today. After 38 years on the police force, Dorn would help out the owners of Lee's Pawn and Jewelry. As one piece put it, when the business alarm would go off, Dorn would check it out. And that's what he did the night he was killed and shot. The outpouring of support for Dorn and his family from neighbors, friends, and the police was absolutely extraordinary. It was uplifting and it was deserved. Like the people he served, we should never forget the service that he and many other current and former law enforcement officers provide every day in the communities in which they live. Killing of retired St. Louis police captain David Dorn. The man charged with his murder was convicted of felony robbery back in 2014 and sentenced to seven years. But Stephen Cannon never spent a day in jail. He got a suspended sentence and probation, which he went on to violate at least twice. The retired police captain murdered outside of a pawn shop will be laid to rest today. David Dorn spent nearly 40 years with the St. Louis Police Department. The 77 year old killed trying to stop looters outside his friend's store. And look at this hundreds waiting in long lines to pay their respects at a public viewing yesterday. A private funeral for family and fellow officers will be held today. 24-year-old Stefan Cannon is charged with Dorn's murder. The retired St. Louis police captain killed during the violent riots will be laid to rest later today. Todd Pyro joins us live as that funeral is set to begin in just a few hours. Todd? Steve, good morning, Captain. David Dorn was shot and killed by a looter while working security at a friend's pawn shop. That private funeral, like you mentioned, set for later today. But last night, hundreds came to show their respects to the man that served and protected St. Louis for 38 years. If you were looking for a man of faith, a man of joy, um, and a man of leadership, that was Officer Dorn. He was a gentleman of all gentlemen. He was stern, he was polite, he, he was just overall good person. Missouri Governor Mike Parson also came to pay his respects, presenting Dorn's family with a plaque in the officer's honor. Dorn's son spoke last week about the impact of such a big loss. A numbing feeling that came over my body and uh, I just like, wow, I just couldn't believe it. I was in total disbelief. 24-year-old Stefan Cannon is charged in Dorn's murder. Dorn's death came the same night that four officers were shot and 55 businesses burglarized or damaged in St. Louis. David Dorn served nearly 40 years on the St. Louis police force before he retired in October 2007. He then became chief of Moline Acres. It's a small town in St. Louis County. Friends described him as bigger than life. Heartbreaking.